All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to my talk. Um, welcome back from lunch. Um, today, I'm here to talk about uh, Gravium and Micronaut and a little bit of the Oracle database as well and some uh, database-related uh, connectivity libraries and APIs that we have. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Juarez Barbosa Jr. I work for Oracle as a senior principal Java developer evangelist. I'm based out of Dublin, Ireland, but I'm Brazilian, and by the way. Am I lucky enough to have my Brazilian friends here, Maximilian and Otavio, uh, supporting me? Yes, so as I said, I'm coming from Dublin. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure for me to be here in Prague, participating in Geekon. It is my very first time here, both in the city and also taking part in the event. Uh, just to give you a glimpse of my experience, you know, uh, concerning software development, I'm a developer since um, 1995 and a long time Java developer as well. But of course, this is not a presentation about my profile, so uh, let's uh, get started, okay? By the way, uh, if you are interested in the uh, resources uh, that I will share um, today, okay, you can just uh, scan this QR code or, of course, feel free to reach out to me on social media, you know, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and any other uh, social media channel, and I'm more than happy to share everything with you, all right? Uh, yes, let's talk about Micronaut then, uh, as you may have heard about the framework, you know, uh, one of the top four, perhaps, you know, um, frameworks that we have concerning enterprise Java development, cloud native, and everything else, along with Spring Boot and uh, Halidon and Quarkus, of course. Um, I know that uh, Red Rat has a massive operation here in the Czech Republic. Uh, and there are some comparisons here, but please, uh, no flamed uh, discussions, okay? <laughs> uh, that's a joke. I'm trying. Uh, okay, so, yeah, Micronaut, it's a modern Java framework that was uh, designed, you know, from scratch um, back in uh, 2017, okay? Um, supported by Oracle, by the way. Oracle has an internal team that actually contributes, uh, you know, um, to the development of Micronaut as a framework. But Micronaut is interesting because it is designed also for cloud native env environments, right? So it is uh, somehow cloud native friendly by default as well, uh, as we'll see. And so it's good for things like serverless, um, all things cloud native and uh, microservices and so on uh, with quite interesting features. Um, we announced uh, Microsoft, uh, um, sorry, Micronaut uh, 4 uh, recently, okay? so. Uh, I will uh, talk a little bit about some of the features. Um, uh, it supports all the uh, application types that we have to address concerning uh, all the functional and non-functional requirements that we have uh, nowadays, right? So everything will be there for you. It's quite flexible. Some interesting features like the expression language uh, that we have now in version 4, I do advise you to have a look because it brings simplicity and also it is quite powerful. Uh, it has a... Um, Specific CLI, you know, to accelerate development, but as all the other uh, developer-friendly uh, frameworks, uh, there's also a launcher where you can go and just select the APIs, libraries, and everything else that you want to compose uh, regarding the software stack for your uh, application. And it is uh, highly optimized uh, because everything is actually, um, you know, uh, computed and performed in advance for you concerning uh, Compilation time and ahead of time compilation. You know, uh, when we talk about the JVM, you may remember we have the JIT compiler, you know, with the C2 compiler, but now we have AOT and native image and GraalVM. And by the way, um, my talk is about this intersection, you know, and the synergy that you can get out of that when combining both, um, you know, options. Um, and a little bit of the Oracle Cloud as well, along with the Oracle database, as I just uh, talked about. Um, Okay, speaking of ahead of time um, compilation, you know, all the dependencies then are, they are computed at compile time, not runtime. And that's great because uh, it will, at the end of the day, deliver better performance, you know, predictability as well. Um, uh, we have annotations, you know, for metadata, uh, meta annotations, AO, AOP proxies, uh, Bing introspections, everything, you know, all the infrastructure and everything. As you can see here, there's a simple block diagram, you know, just to illustrate that. but uh, it is nice because 
it is um, better for you as a developer, perhaps uh, to avoid some surprises that you might uh, face with other frameworks regarding uh, the, the uh, effective deployment and runtime execution. Okay, so at runtime, uh, at the end of the day, you know, the uh, benefits of having this approach and adopting it uh, is um, we have no reflection, you know, no proxy generation, no dynamic class loading. Class loading is, sim is simplified. Class path scanning and things, uh, those things that um, somehow they would affect the overall performance of your application and possibly trigger some GC, you know, uh, executions and so on. Uh, that's actually uh, then addressed by design uh, by Micronaut as well. Okay. It's quite uh, comprehensive uh, and flexible, so you can see here. So uh, you know the the, the logos that uh, you are possibly used to. Um, all the build tools with Maven and Gradle frameworks. Uh, you know um, we can see GraalVM, uh, Groovy, and Kotlin supported as well as JVM friendly programming languages, and all the clouds here, um, including serverless with uh, you know. Um, things like uh, you know Oracle Functions, Azure Functions, uh, the Oracle Cloud is here as well. But the other uh, cloud competitors uh, that I usually I don't talk about, but they are here, you know, just uh, because it is a talk about Micronaut. Okay. Uh, in terms of features, um, as I, I uh, just introduced, uh, we have things like uh, the support to um, the JSR, you know, 330 with uh, the inject annotation and also the spring uh, related ones with auto wired and so on. Configuration, all plenty of options for, for you. Everything is there, including formats like Tomal, you know, but um, config 4K with Kotlin if you want and um, property files, YM. Uh, some people love YM, uh, you know, there are some jokes uh, in the community about that. Um, Validation support, being validation, is there for you. Um, uh, that will uh, actually uh, help you also with uh, reflection-free and uh, better startup times and also uh, jar um, reduced memory, you know, uh, concerning um, the overall um, memory utilization uh, and so on. And that's actually a benefit when you combine both micro, by Micronaut and GovM uh, as well. And of course, uh, AOP, uh, aspect-oriented programming for cross-concerns, uh, uh, you know, requirements and things that you, uh, you can actually enforce uh, uh, ortho uh, in a kind of or orthogonal way, you know, uh, at compile time and reflection-free as well, okay? So you can get the, 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 the power of AAP, but in a kind of optimized and simplified way, okay? Uh, in terms of features, uh, the uh, embedded HTTP server uh, is there, as all the uh, other competitor frameworks, or perhaps uh, or the, the frameworks that we have in our uh, Java ecosystem. Okay, just uh, the classic example here, we have uh, the annotation for our controller, and then we have a method uh, that, uh, you know, uh, will support uh, HTTP method, you know, get, or, or HTTP verb, if you, if you will like and produce uh, the uh, res respective um, uh, uh, MIME type here, you know, media type, uh, text plane. Uh, but it's just a plain example as all the other examples that we have, again, for uh, the uh, frameworks that uh, you're possibly used to, okay? Uh, HTTP client, as simple as that as well. And with Micronaut uh, 4, we are supporting the new HTTP client uh, in JDK uh, as well. Uh, I think I have a slide just to emphasize that. Um, but uh, the interfaces, they are, again, implemented at compile time, okay, so there are many benefits uh, concerning this approach. Uh, other features, uh, because we are talking at the end of the day about uh, mission-critical uh, applications, right, so messaging is supported. You can see Kafka here, but also Rabbit, MQ, MQTT, so these protocols are supported, you know, AMQP. Uh, of course, JMS uh, with Java and you know, Jakarta messaging as well, uh, if you like it. Um, and all the models there with, uh, you know, publish, subscribe, you know, uh, and topics and, and, and queues, point to point, you know, asynchronous communication. So, of course, all the options are there for you. So, you can elect your asynchronous use cases and then address them in combination with those components. You know, we can call them perhaps middleware components or messaging oriented uh, middleware components, and that's supported by Micronaut as well. Okay, so messaging covered, so you can address, again, both um, um, synchronous and asynchronous use cases. So you have a look at your uh, business processes, you decompose them into use cases and the functionality, but everything will be supported and available for you, okay? 
In terms of uh, uh, data access, uh, quite comprehensive as well. You can see JDBC here, of course, uh, including the latest versions of the J, uh, JDBC SPACs. Uh, NoSQL, uh, we can see Hibernate here as well. Um, other logos here, the Oracle database that I will talk a little bit about. And also the tools that we love, like Flyway, Liquibase, and so on, so that can actually help you in automating your entire development process, uh, easier uh, provisioning of databases management, and also both at uh, you know, development you know, um, and production uh, time. Um, everything is uh, supported for you, okay? Speaking of data access and specifically uh, about Oracle, because I work for Oracle, of course I represent Oracle, okay, so you can see how you can configure a specific dialect here, so it is as easy as that, right? Uh, the interface is implemented again at compile time, so I don't have to talk about that anymore because I talk about it, I don't know, maybe five or half a dozen um, times now, right? Uh, we can see the implementation of the classic uh, REPL story uh, design pattern here, as usual. Uh, we have that uh, with the other frameworks as well. But you can see uh, the flexibility of perhaps implementing some custom queries as well, okay? And that will be computed again at compile time for you, right? Speaking a little bit of Java application development with Oracle, okay, we can see all the logos here as well, you know, frameworks, application servers, you know, functions with, with Project FN, you know, and possibly uh, uh, Oracle functions if you want uh, to have a managed approach to uh, deploying functions, okay. Uh, tools here, Spring, Spring Boot, and, and you know, Reactor, uh, Reactivity is supported, Rx Java, uh, we have all those uh, libraries here, I will mention them. Not my uh, focus here uh, concerning this talk, but you can see uh, the connection options. Uh, if you happen to have a project with the Oracle database, I think it um, uh, might be worthwhile to have a look at these options because first we have the Oracle JDBC driver, uh, which supports virtual threads uh, since version 21C. You know, it is fully instrumented and it works with virtual threads. And now with the release of JDK 21, uh, virtual threads, you know, uh, reached a GA, so it's available for everyone now. So we can start to innovate and accelerate on top of that. And we have a, sp a specialized uh, connection pool called UCP, the Universal Connection Pool, that leverages many uh, features provided by the Oracle database. But the nice thing, we call the Oracle database a converged database because you can see several different, uh, you know, uh, ways and, and models uh, here that you can adopt to actually, uh, you know, implement uh, your data layer with relational uh, databases or NoSQL or anything. Uh, as an example, Oracle has something called uh, blockchain tables, right? Um, in blockchain tables, if you, if you have a project that perhaps uh, the uh, characteristics of blockchain uh, would be benefit uh, your use cases, things like traceability, non-repudiation, and um, better security, and so on, instead of perhaps just uh, standing up a full-fledged blockchain network with many distributed nodes and so on, you can just create this blockchain table and get all the benefits out of that, and that's also supported by Oracle by default, okay, as another option and in, in, in table type that you can create. This thing is good because then this convergence, uh, at the end of the day, it will simplify your architecture uh, in terms of the way that you can orchestrate and have different uh, data types um, as part of your application. Perhaps you are using Oracle as a relational database, but you need NoSQL as well. You might need about a different uh, database or competitor, but you don't have to, to add that as perhaps another uh, moving part as part of your solution. Okay, you can simplify it and possibly as a software architect or perhaps solutions or architect, remove a single point of failure. You know, you don't have to create another component to be managed uh, as part of your application and depending on the provider, you will need to uh, have interactions with a different support team and pay different licenses and so on. That's supported by Oracle, okay? The Oracle database has uh, everything for you. Uh, yes, just to provide you a quick glimpse about the options here then, you can see the da database on the right uh, hand side, okay, so we support uh, the classic uh, blocking approach to database uh, um, uh, connectivity with JDBC, uh, the blocking way, right? Uh, but we have also support to s several reactive uh, uh, extensions, right? So you can see uh, the uh, um, the uh, rectangle we, that is dashed in red here, okay, so uh, the Oracle driver actually it has support to the uh, Java Flow API, you know, introduced uh, as far as I remember in Java C9, 
okay, by default. So when you deploy the jar, there's no need to add another jar as a dependency because that's available there uh, by default, okay, with a concrete implementation so you can just uh, go and use it beyond the specification and the SPI, the service provider interface. But beyond that, we also have support to R uh, R2DBC, the Reactive Relational Database Connectivity. All the major database players, they uh, provide support for uh, this type of connectivity. So perhaps you are doing reactive at different layers concerning your application, and you can just uh, extend that also to the data layer and the integration layer, perhaps, you know. So you can uh, actually just uh, make uh, uh, and adopt a kind of uh, homogeneous approach to data access, having a reactive from end to end. And there is another option, but this one, it uses a feature uh, supported by the Oracle database called uh, Direct Path Insert. The library is called RSI, the Reactive Strings Ingestion Library. Okay, but this one, it uses uh, this Direct Path Insert uh, format because uh, when you have, you know, applications with massive amounts of data to be ingested, like, I don't know, smart cities and IoT and so on, instead of using the, uh, and, and actually, um, orchestrating the internal uh, mechanisms uh, that are related to SQL uh, and, and, and the SQL engine, you know, regarding the relational database ma management system, okay, it bypasses this me mechanism, so it can just create uh, the, uh, ingest the data and create the data blocks, you know, the batches internally uh, in an optimized way and insert everything uh, immediately, you know, so it is actually optimized uh, for this type of approach. But at the end of the day, uh, we give developers a choice uh, concerning uh, the way that you can use the Oracle database in combination with uh, those uh, data access uh, specifications, right? There's another uh, interesting uh, feature now called a database pipelining, uh, where you can adopt a, a kind of a synchronous file and forget approach to uh, data access as well. So you can just dispatch, you know, uh, your requests or maybe inserts and, you know, everything that you can do with SQL, DML, and so on. Right, a data uh, manipulation language and, uh, as, as a subset of SQL, okay, and that's optimized. Last thing, with virtual threads, again, uh, the driver supports virtual threads by default. It is fully instrumented and fully tested in production with virtual threads, okay, so you can perhaps uh, revert to adopting a blocking approach to database access now, because by the way, I'm not against reactive programming. I love reactive programming, okay? I love RxJava, Project Reactor, and everything. But, um, you know, with uh, uh, virtual threads now, it is somehow a better way of uh, leveraging your underlying uh, resources in terms of hardware utilization, you know, uh, processor time and memory and disk usage and all those things. If you are actually uh, promoting that and actually uh, using less resources, uh, that might, uh, uh, I would say, result in um, perhaps reducing the costs for your entire infrastructure, you know? Uh, so, and that's a good win-win uh, situation and a good thing for everyone because if you can reduce costs, you can save money, you know, and possibly your customers or your project can invest in, I, I would say, adopting something else, you know, as, as part of your strategy, all right? Uh, let's uh, proceed uh, talking about Micronaut in terms of security, building support for LDAP, you know, so the LDAP, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the directory um, ser ser servers and services there for you, LD, if you know the traditional files, you can create your trees and you can have your users there, your user base, your groups, everything else, and that's supported by default. Bit, uh, by default, sorry, uh, OAuth uh, 2, password uh, grant flow, and also configuration and annotation based for security rules, and basic authentication, session authentication, JWT, and uh, with uh, other um, APIs as well, and the different uh, certificates, uh, the ones that are somehow the de facto standards concerning the industry, fully flexible for you, supported by Micronaut, OAuth 2, OpenID Connect, and everything else. Uh, and of course, you can combine that with all the, the, the managed services uh, provided by uh, the, the cloud players, right? Um, some uh, additional features here, you know, just to touch then distributed tracing, uh, all the frameworks, they have that now. It's quite important for us. We know why with microservices, that's something that we don't, uh, we should never ever overlook, right? Um, <clears throat> Service discovery and distributed configuration like Eureka, monitoring with micrometer, JMX, you know, the traditional management beings, elastic search, you name them, right? API development, GraphQL, uh, you know, everything else, gRPC and so on. Containers, of course, because it is a cloud native by default, right? Including uh, test container, which is great. Uh, 
In caching, uh, I would highlight here perhaps Oracle Coherence. You know, uh, that, that's a nice uh, solution by Oracle as well. Uh, and we have a community version of it. Uh, if you've never heard about it, I do advise you to have a look. Email, error handling, and so on, OK? This is the launcher, as I said. All the other frameworks, they provide that, OK? So uh, I um, advise you to have a look, OK? And perhaps you can say, OK, Micronaut is just another Java framework, you know, a fancy one, and why I should have a look at Micronaut. We'll uh, shift gears now and start to talk a, lot about, uh, a little bit about uh, some things that <coughs> are interesting in Micronaut, OK? First, you can see here we, uh, there's a specific CLI, OK? It is as easy as that to create your application and add the features with the right switch here. You can see dash dash features, GraalVM, OK? Um, by the way, the couple of applications that I created here, I, I decided to use the, um, the um, CLI, right? Uh, just because it is easy, I can show you the TXT, just a few steps. Um, support for the uh, IDEs that we love, like IntelliJ and VS Code and so on. Interesting to say, now there's a new project. Um, we call it uh, GraalVM uh, Cloud Native, right? And some uh, new uh, extensions for VS Code uh, for Micronaut, GraalVM, and also uh, Graal cloud, uh, cloud Native. I have the, the links here. I will provide you a glimpse, but I advise you to have a look. Because VS Code is good. It is a polyglot um, development environment. It is lightweight, right? And so you don't have to switch context, uh, perhaps, to work with other languages. I don't know, maybe Python, Golang, or something else, right? Depending on your project. And speaking of Micronaut 4, uh, Java 17 required, virtual thread supported um, by default as well. Uh, so that's great. I talked about that, uh, the new HTTP uh, virtual threads uh, support and also the um, implementation based on the JavaNet HTTP, HTTP client, uh, JAP uh, 321, okay? Uh, older versions of, for, for older versions of Micronaut, okay, version uh, 3.x uh, is still there for you, so you can uh, use it as well if you have, I don't know, if you are inheriting a kind of legacy. Um, <laughs> we, can, we, we can't call it legacy, but maybe you have a project at hand and it uses Micronaut, okay, so that's a good option for you. Kotlin 1.8 support, Groovy, and so on. And, uh, and Micronaut Data um, 4, okay, support to Hibernate 6, okay as the concrete default implementation uh, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and, of course, remember, you can combine that with the other libraries that I talked about, you know, provided by Oracle as well, okay? Uh, in terms of uh, the optimization, zero lighter runtime, you know, uh, uh, performance uh, close to raw and eddy, um, uh, modules uh, is spun out of core, service, uh, discovery, retry, session, validation, web sockets, you know, so you, uh, you have all the options um, if you decide to you know, implement full duplex communication and everything else. Dependency is now optional, okay? So Jackson and also um, Snake uh, YM, uh, that's not actually a requirement, you know, um, by default anymore. Other features that I talked about, the HTTP client and server filter methods, quite useful. Um, and uh, they, they can be used uh, annotation-based and read out uh, uh, the reactive uh, APIs. Um, Annotation-based course configuration, okay, good for security, HTTP3 support, uh, use of GraalVM metadata REPL, uh, Micronaut um, um, serialization over Jackson, okay, so um, this is actually, as they've removed that and they actually moved it to become optional, uh, there's a new Microsoft serialization that is actually considered the default one. And um, uh, the disabled cloud environment uh, deduction by default as well, okay? so. The nice one here uh, that I really love is the compile time expression language, okay? So uh, this uh, gives you uh, flexibility to actually have uh, something checked at compile time, but still, you know, you can get things um, um, and actually uh, do configuration by default. So instead of having perhaps um, uh, 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 an implementation that is too focused on the programmatic approach to that, you can add a little bit of declarative approach to it uh, and use uh, the expression language. Okay, uh, so a couple of examples here, uh, and I advise you to have a look uh, later as well. Um, okay, uh, there's a control panel as well. So um, uh, this is good because uh, you can just inspect, you know, uh, some configurations, components, uh, runtime um, um, as well, and you can change then, you know, um, uh, on the fly. Okay, so this um, panel, although it is a simple one, you can see just a simple GUI here, but it gives you better visibility about the things that you are running, you know, and perhaps it will help you understand how the um, uh, Micronaut framework works, right? 
so yes, uh, have a look at this one as well, okay? And let's talk a little bit about GCN now, okay? Um, so uh, cloud, cloud native, cloud agnostic modules, okay? So all cloud supported, okay? And platform independent, in a, a platform independent way. Um, and uh, you have uh, things like, you know, object stores, secrets, uh, streaming, everything else supported there. Uh, DVS code extension to help you orchestrate uh, these uh, support as well. And built-in support for the Grovy uh, native image. Okay, uh, which is uh, nice because uh, it has, you know, AOT as well ahead of time, as expected, native image, you know, uh, that can result in, you know, better startup times, you know, better memory utilization, uh, possibly better performance uh, in terms of latency, response times, and also throughput. And when you have all those optimizations, you know, for a single deployment, but let's think about a mission critical application deployed to a cloud environment, and you have perhaps hundreds, thousands, or perhaps millions of requests, okay, that will uh, ultimately, again, uh, help you uh, in reducing costs, okay, so you can save money, um, and that's a great thing, okay, for everyone, right? Uh, the tools and VS Code extensions, okay, I have the links here and I have them open in my browser, okay, hopefully I'll be able to run a quick demo here about uh, both, uh, and then I'll show you uh, how the, the, the tools, uh, they look like, all right? Uh, so I do advise you to have a look at gra.cloud, okay, if you go to this link, actually there's actually, actually now uh, gra OS, gra VM, and gra cloud native, okay, three components under this umbrella, okay, it's quite interesting. Uh, okay, let's talk about GraalVM, okay? So GraalVM, uh, as I just uh, talked about uh, minutes ago, um, we have the classic uh, just-in-time compiler, you know, C2 compiler and so on, um, and, uh, you know, the interpretation and all those things, but we don't have a time compilation. Actually, uh, there are several benefits because you can optimize uh, the uh, deployment artifact, right? You have it compiled uh, to a native format as well, uh, so that's good because, you know, we Java, we do have nowadays with the modern JVMs, you know, uh, fantastic uh, GC algorithms like G1, GC and so on, but you can combine, uh, you know, uh, native execution with this uh, algorithm as well. So you can, of course, maximize, uh, you know, the uh, benefits that you can get out of that. Okay, so the, both options are uh, there for you, but of course, uh, that's why we have GraalVM now and it is gaining traction more and more. And even competitors are adopting that, if we can call them competitors, okay, there's a, an interesting uh, case here. Um, and a native image goals, I talked about, uh, you know, faster startup times, right? So it is better for you in case you want to achieve better, you know, SLO and SLAs, you know, in terms of sustaining the operations of your solutions and perhaps a redundancy and all the non-functional requirements, right? A high availability and everything else. The faster you can start a system or restore a system, the better, right? Again, a low resource utilization, okay? So that's good because uh, it will uh, result in reducing costs, ultimately. Uh, minimize vulnerability, that's a kind of positive side effect because with GraalVM, when you uh, actually create a native image, you know, uh, everything that is not needed will be left out, you know? So it just reduces uh, the footprint of your deployment uh, artifact, right? So uh, APIs or um, anything, you know, um, that is not being used uh, won't be part of that uh, final deployment uh, executable, right? And at the end of the day, we know uh, for cybersecurity, uh, if you can reduce the surface area of your application, right? you are actually protecting uh, your application in a better way, right? So if you are reducing unused classes and everything else, uh, that's a good uh, thing, okay? And compact packaging as well, that's a benefit because uh, if you have a deployment artifact that occupies less memory, it is good for both storage, but also the uh, runtime execution of it when you have it loaded to the in-memory, you know, um, uh, execution of that and so on. So you can see those are the perhaps the main selling points here and how valuable it is uh, to adopt a GraalVM, but there's more, of course, right? So this uh, synergy then, Micronaut and GraalVM, 
uh, startup time, uh, depending on the, uh, of course, the application, because uh, it depends on what you are um, building and what are your requirements in terms of the uh, libraries and the packages and everything else uh, that will compose your software stack, you know, from, from the bottom to the top and, and back and forth, you know. Cons uh, uh, con consume less memory, you know, so reduce memory footprint as well, so that's better for everything, performance, throughput, execution, reduce cost, storage, everything else. I keep uh, emphasizing that. Uh, and of course, the performance related uh, things here, latency, response times, throughput, and so on, once again, okay? So Micronaut and GraalVM, you know, uh, the best integration possibly, uh, right? Uh, there are several options for you here, um, but this is supported, of course, in GraalVM, both uh, by Oracle Labs. Uh, we have the internal things that work, uh, you know, focusing on Micronaut and GraalVM. Those things, they become to our research and development or, or Oracle Labs. Okay, so we have GraalVM uh, EE as well, that perhaps can provide you, you know, better support and interaction with those people, better response times in, time in, fa in case you, you face some issues uh, with the, um, the components, okay, but uh, you, you decide, okay, if you decide to go the open source way as well, it works, uh, and we have now uh, an expressive community around uh, these solutions as well, okay. And Micronaut ready for GraalVM uh, since day one, by design, as you may remember. So Micronaut has uh, actually, uh, you know, is fully aligned with uh, GraalVM because, uh, as you may remember from my uh, presentation uh, today here, no reflection, no runtime proxies, you know, no, no uh, bytecode generation, dynamic class loading, everything else, fully aligned with blockchain, okay? And now the interesting uh, extensions for Visual Studio Code, okay? Uh, we'll have a, a glimpse of that uh, quickly, okay? Some comparisons here, so again, guys, uh, no flame discussions, okay, <laughs> or questions. Um, we have uh, here Micronaut, Quarkus, Spring Boot, and Halidom, perhaps, again, as I said, the four main uh, frameworks that we have in the Java ecosystem, the modern ones, you know, cloud native and, you know, um, supporting uh, the, the latest uh, um, you know, releases of uh, the JDK and also um, modern approaches uh, to software development, right? Uh, there's a link to the uh, deck on the speaker or deck if you want to have a look uh, at uh, this one specifically, okay? Um, that was actually presented at JCon uh, 2023. Um, a comparison here now, uh, not only concerning the startup performance, you know, for Gradle. If you have an approach, uh, you know, uh, to do that from a build to with Gradle or Maven or maybe a packaged uh, startup with the classic uh, Java interpreter, okay, that's the first one here. The second one, uh, speaking of nat native startup performance, okay, so you can see the comparisons here as well. Again, the link is there for you. But you can see how uh, Micronaut, uh, you know, performs well here, okay, uh, in comparison to that. Uh, a na native memory used as well, so you can see reduced footprint here, uh, once again, okay? And this one is the one that I would like to emphasize here, maybe. It's quite interesting because it is actually the result of some investigation by AWS, right, for uh, some of their, uh, uh, in combination we know uh, of, uh, uh, and in partnership with Disney as well for um, uh, the goals they uh, needed to achieve in order to identify what would be the best option for them in terms of having a modern uh, uh, framework, uh, you know, like Micronaut, and also exploring the benefits of GraalVM. And it's quite interesting because uh, you can see that actually uh, uh, even if you consider, uh, you know, the way that it was uh, actually compared here, you know, there are some uh, specific um, uh, um, metrics and things that they looked at, uh, but you can see how well, uh, you know, native image, you know, in terms of uh, using functions, you know, and Lambda functions uh, with AWS uh, for Disney, with Micronaut and a GraalVM, you know. Um, it is actually, uh, you know, amazing. Uh, you can see here uh, how it is uh, better in terms of uh, the uh, initialization duration, you know, and with serverless, you know, we have that kind of ramp up and warm up, uh, you know, uh, steps, but uh, when you have an approach uh, with uh, uh, this combination here, actually you can minimize everything and get a, a, the, be uh, the best out of that, okay? Uh, quick demo here now. Um, so. I understand, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to talk about uh, the new features here, and so perhaps uh, this is just an introductory um, uh, talk uh, for some of you guys, okay? But 
Beyond I, I, I start uh, showing you, I just want to highlight first uh, the site for, uh, you know, uh, Grad.cloud and, and GCN here. Uh, maybe I can just uh, navigate back to the uh, main landing page here. So we can see Grad.cloud. Okay, I advise you to have a look at that. Uh, the so-called Grad stack, now we have Grad VM here, Grad Cloud Native, GCN, and Grad OS. Okay, so... It is actually, um, you know, growing now and, uh, you know, having several different interesting ramifications out of the initial uh, idea uh, that comprises GraalVM, okay? And uh, there's a uh, new uh, extension pack for VS Code, uh, you know, and that comprises, you know, GCN, uh, native tools here, uh, OCI DevOps, which is the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, uh, which I happen to have here uh, as well. And the Micronaut tools, okay, I have it open here as well. So there are some, uh, there's an extension with some accelerators for uh, combining GraalVM and Micronaut as well, okay? So uh, please have a look. The application that I have here, actually I can do something first. I can just show you, I happen to have a very basic GraalVM. Um, actually I have just a hello world here. You can see, you know, a source code uh, in Java here, dot .java extension and the traditional dot .class, you know, the, 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 the class file with the bytecode and then the, the native um, um, file that I can create. I'm running Windows here because uh, I do a little bit of multi-cloud for Oracle as well with Azure, uh, which by the way, before rejoining Oracle last year, I used to work for Microsoft. Um, so I'm supporting that part of our business as well. There are some tricks uh, when you are running uh, GraalVM on Windows. Uh, as an example, you have to use uh, a specific um, uh, um, um, command prompt, okay, depending on your target hardware platform and so on, and you have to install some dependencies for uh, C++ on Windows and so on, but it is uh, quite straightforward, okay? Well, this one here, um, the first example, so you can see here the three files, okay, I happen to have them here. Possibly I can just run, um, you know, the executable and you can see uh, it's just a hello world. But this step, uh, it is as easy as that, okay? I have the file here. So you, you just go and use the Java compiler, you know, and then you can generate the bytecode here. Uh, and you can run it with the Java interpreter, okay? And the other step is just to run the native image command and you provide, uh, you know, the... Uh, source file name, uh, this is just a flag that I can use uh, to skip uh, the execution of some uh, um, two chain uh, checks, okay? Um, I can run it now uh, here if you want, but I have actually another example that perhaps is more interesting, the one that I want to show you. It's just a simple Java application um, with Micronaut and GraalVM as well. Okay, so we have the uh, usual entry point here, you know, for Micronaut, and I implemented an entity here, so with uh, the respective uh, annotations from um, Micronoft data, as you can see the packages here. Okay, so no tricks here. It's uh, quite um, uh, similar to the ORMs that we are used to, like Hibernate and so on. Um, <clears throat> And uh, beyond that, I can also uh, Im implement uh, the repo story here. And, uh, you know, I have the uh, respective imports here, including the dialect, and I'm using Oracle, okay? For the database then, uh, actually I deployed an Oracle autonomous database to the Oracle cloud, okay? We call it autonomous because uh, this database, it has several uh, background processes that can um, perform the uh, traditional or usual uh, tasks that would be performed by, by DBA, things like, you know, some security checks, patching, automatic patching, um, performance optimization, you know, uh, create some indexes, you know, so there are several things uh, running um, behind the scenes, and that's why we call it autonomous. It supports uh, three different uh, uh, workloads, you know, the base database, but we have a specific one for DW as well, data warehousing, and also uh, OLTP, you know, the so-called Autonomous Transaction process Processing Database, okay? For this one, uh, to, de to deploy the database, I just uh, used uh, micro, uh, sorry, Terraform. Okay, so I can just uh, come here and uh, have some specifications about the database type that I want to deploy. Okay, you can see OLTP here. Uh, the Oracle database implements MTLS, you know, mutual TLS, so it provides better security, but in case, and that is supported by one a wallet that you can download from the database instance, okay, uh, that is uh, deployed to the cloud with Terraform. 
Uh, or if I want, I can just disable the use of MTLS here and, uh, and, and just adopt uh, an approach to whitelist some IPs and use the traditional credentials, you know, username, password, and something else. Okay, uh, for the variables then, you can see uh, I just have to provide what is called the OCID for the compartment in the Oracle Cloud. The OCID, if you are uh, working with other cloud environments, I don't know, maybe Azure, okay, it is similar to the Azure resource groups. You know, the way that you can actually um, uh, group uh, the services and the, uh, 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 your deployments and the different uh, bits that you have as part of your architecture. And that's it, I specify a password for the uh, database admin. Okay, as soon as I create an instance, I receive an email message with all the details. Okay, if I go to the Oracle Cloud now, which I happen to have uh, open here, it should, um, unfortunately, the, um, there was something uh, blocking a port that I needed uh, to actually do my presentation here, so I needed to revert to using my 4G connection here, but uh, I'll, I'll try to show you, um, just to show you, um, how the database uh, deployment uh, is uh, there, okay. Um, the autonomous database is nice as well because it provides you several accelerators uh, like, you know, web-based uh, tools so you can run your queries from the browser, you can do things like machine learning with the Oracle database, running inside the database with, uh, you know, uh, Python uh, as an example, so you can have uh, two Python notebooks running uh, with your Oracle database without the need to deploy uh, things like, you know, maybe using Google Collab or, uh, Jupyter itself, you know, and the, the notebooks that you can get, uh, you know, and install locally. Yeah, it seems uh, that has a, it has a problem, but um, okay, anyway. But for this application, going back here, beyond specifying, you know, my entity here, I have uh, just uh, some uh, additional configurations here. Uh, basically, um, the OCID that I talked about, where you can group uh, the group that you create, and I deployed my uh, database instance uh, to that group. Uh, the wallet password, uh, the database uh, uh, and username and admin, okay, and the profile. And with that, I have, uh, you know, a running um, database deployment. Uh, okay, it is not loading, I don't know why. Um, I can just now run uh, the example here uh, with, um, with Micronaut and GraalVM, okay? First a run, um, perhaps uh, it is a good idea just to run it with Maven uh, in the JIT compiler, okay? So it's a simple application. I have just a simple HTTP request here in a controller just to retrieve um, some records from the database which I call things, okay? Uh, which, by the way, I used <laughs> the name of my colleagues uh, who are, are here, but perhaps that we would destroy my friendship with them, but um, <clears throat> and you can see the uh, request here, okay, so I just go in, uh, I call it localhost and things, and then I get uh, uh, the three names, my name, Otavio's name, and Maximilian, okay, so I will have, yeah, you can see the startup time here, you know, 14 seconds, I can just uh, execute uh, the query and the call here, okay, yeah, I have the results, I happen to have, you know, these two here as well, so you can see the JSON and the results here. There's a different call, I can also call uh, just uh, the uh, specific record for my name. You can see HTTP status code 200 OK here, right? But let's uh, just uh, shift gears here now, and I will uh, just, um, uh, I happen to have it uh, pre-compiled because it takes time uh, to run uh, the execution. I can do it just to show you how it works, but if I, that's Windows, okay. Yeah, you can see here then uh, the executable Micronaut uh, guide, okay, so I can just uh, run Micronaut uh, guide here, dot uh, exe, oh, sorry. Actually, I may have it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then it starts uh, as well, okay. So I can possibly close this one here. And, and you can see, yeah, it is not uh, observable, uh, I would say, uh, a great uh, improvement in terms of the startup time, but if I run it again and again, uh, possibly it will be better, but I can just run uh, and the same uh, query for the same application here, and you can see that it works, okay? Um, okay, so now uh, just to talk about uh, some of uh, the topics here, okay? Uh, the references here, you know, pointers to the Micronaut God, the config reference uh, guide, uh, config reference uh, Javadocs, and 
a link to uh, the announcement of Micronaut 4 as well uh, by the main architect. I advise you to have a look. Okay. Same thing with GrovVM. And uh, the last link here is GrovVM for JDK 21. Many improvements uh, now, right? And changes as well. For example, the um, GrovVM updater is not actually um, provided or perhaps available there, you know, uh, as a kind of um, standalone installment uh, installation uh, that you have to do uh, by default anymore. Okay, and the pointers to GrowCloud Native again. Okay, and the extensions pack and the Micronaut tools. Okay, and uh, I could have added uh, the Micronaut tools under Micronaut here, but actually it belongs to the. Um, umbrella of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, cloud somehow, right? And the last link here, if you want to, if you are using Oracle, uh, you know, um, database, or if you happen to have a customer or a project uh, that uses Oracle, I advise you to have a look at uh, the page for JDBC, uh, including the R2DBC driver and the RSI, the Reactive Strings Ingestion Library, okay? Uh, that's everything from my side then, folks. Um, thank you very much again for coming, and I can take some questions now if we have some. Thank you. Let me have a look here. I think... Oh, I think I talked about, so yeah, there is a question here. What unique developer experience features on Micronaut would you emphasize if performance is not a, pro a problem? Okay, um, perhaps I talked about so many things here. I think ahead of time compilation is actually uh, an in combination with GrowVM as well. That's a killer combo, right? Um, perhaps the expression language uh, in Micronaut 4 and being cloud native by default and by design from day one or perhaps day zero, right? Um, so many things, guys, but I think that's pretty much covered by my presentation here. And as I said, I'm more than happy to share the deck with you, if you want, okay? Feel free to approach me here um, during the conference. Uh, we can have additional discussions over a coffee, or maybe you can reach out to me on, on social media. All right? That's the only question that I can see here. Oh, oh I think there's another one. Will Micronaut also work well with other databases than Oracle? Does it use hi Hibernate inside? Definitely, yeah, both things. Okay, yeah, of course. It is not something Oracle related or, no, no. Okay. It happens to be supported by Oracle, but it is not, definitely not, not something um, related to Oracle exclusively at all. All right. If you, uh, if you uh, compile then with, uh, let's say, uh, the version of GrowVM for Java 17, okay, um, as far as I remember, uh, it depends, okay, uh, on your usage of what was available and what is available, but usually you don't have to do it because you have, uh, when you uh, actually use native image, you have a compilation that runs against the underlying platform, the native platform. Okay, so you are not changing the, the native platform. If I got your uh, question right, okay, so that should work, definitely. Okay, because it is, uh, that's why we have to compile and, for example, uh, with uh, the Windows uh, environment that I have here, I showed you that actually I'm running a different, uh, you know, uh, prompt here. Just because when I do it, I have to uh, make sure that I can um, just load the right um, dependencies for the platform specifically here. But the, the executable is an executable, a native one, okay? So the dependency is not on the uh, version that you have, uh, okay? If you have uh, something uh, compiled and running for a given platform, that will work anyway, okay? Anyone else? Um, does Micronaut works with Spring or have well, one have to learn new framework. Yes, there is actually a support to some uh, Spring-friendly components, okay, that can be used with Micronaut. That's supported as well. Yeah, there's documentation for that, by the way, okay. What is the relation between Micronaut and Halidon? In the past, I thought that Micronaut is main Oracle modern framework. No, actually, Oracle, uh, it's interesting. We happen to have two modern frameworks. We have Halidon as well, okay? which is supported by Oracle Labs, and we have a team uh, dedicated to, um, to Halidon, uh, which is great as well, by the way, okay? But Micronaut, we have, uh, you know, 
um, the internal uh, team supporting Micronaut, uh, and we are, uh, I would say, um, a strong, solid uh, contributors to Micronaut, but it is not exclusive or something, uh, you know, propriety of Oracle, okay? Yeah, that's the last one, folks. So thank you very much again, okay? And if you want to have a conversation about something more specific, I'm more than happy to talk with you. Thank you so much, and enjoy the event.